So if you thought A Handmaid's Tale was exaggerating things, just check out what's going on in Texas. Let's talk about it in today's video. Are you going to say put them in jail? Are you, is that well, the punishment no, I'm asking you're talking you, about? Because you say you want to ban it. What's I, that mean? I, would, I am against, I am pro-life, yes. What is ban? How do you ban abortion? How do you actually do it? Well, you know, you'll go back to a, a position like they had where people will perhaps go to illegal places. Yeah. But you have to ban it. Do you believe, no, in, but, pun but you're, do you believe you're, in punishment for abortion? Yes or no, as a principle? Uh, the answer is that... There has to be some form of punishment. For the woman? Yeah, there has to be some form. 10 no, cents, 10 you, years, I don't what? know. That I don't know. Hi, I'm Mike Greiner. I'm a lifelong Democratic activist who's concerned about the direction our country is taking. I'm also a lawyer and an academic, and I'm here to help you stand up to the BS of the MAGA crowd. So I remember when Donald Trump was first running for president, and he went on an interview in which he was asked if women who got an abortion should be punished and sent, potentially sent to prison. When Donald Trump answered yes, that's what he thought should happen, people were outraged, thinking that this might finally end his presidential campaign. Well, of course, we know what happened there. This proved to be just one of many gaffes that the media thought was going to end his campaign. But the point that they were missing was that this is actually what his supporters want. We seem to believe that Donald Trump somehow is bound by the same limitations that bind other political figures. But he showed that's not the case. And the reason being is that he's willing to say the things that his right-wing, right racist supporters want to be said. And one of those things is that women who dare to want some kind of control over their own body or their own circumstances are criminals who should be put in prison. Well, if this doesn't sound like Gilead to you, wait till you hear this next thing. So as we know, in Texas, they've passed a number of pieces of legislation aimed at essentially making abortion illegal. And ironically, it seems like we've got a bit of an arms race going on between the different right-wing states to see who can make abortion more illegal. You've got Florida passing a law that does not allow exceptions in the case of rape or incest. And you've got Oklahoma now passing a law that even makes it illegal to distribute the abortion pill. At the rate they're going, it won't be long before we see birth control made illegal or even working outside the home for women, at least in any positions where they can exert some kind of power over society. Well, in the wake of that legislation, we just hear now that Texas has arrested a woman, charging her with murder for supposedly self-inducing an abortion of her own child. Now, the details are still fuzzy on this one, but it really flies in the face of the argument that has long been made by conservatives that the women are victims, that they're not the ones who should be charged and that especially women who've been victimized through rape or incest should not be further victimized by requiring them to carry these babies to term. Apparently, she was released on bail with a $500,000 bond, facing potentially years in prison. Now, if this doesn't scare you, I don't know what will. Since I've been in college, I've been warning people that abortion really was, in some respects, the canary in the coal mine. That, to be fair... Both sides on the abortion debate have legitimate arguments. But the problem is once you scratch a little bit under the surface of those arguments, you don't need to go far to see where they lead. And in the case of the anti-abortion crowd, where it leads is to women being unable to access birth control and potentially to really have any control over their own lives. I mean, you have to remember the right to obtain birth control was only codified by the Supreme Court in the 1960s in the case, case Griswold v. Connecticut. And that was a married couple trying to obtain birth control in Connecticut. And that decision ultimately is what formed the basis for Roe v. Wade a few years later. And that's the problem with this issue. While we can point out the fact that originally it was really just a red herring to essentially cover over a racist agenda, there are people out there who genuinely believe that abortion is murder. And while I disagree with them, I sympathize with their position. But again, you don't have to go far before you start to see where this logic leads. And that logic leads directly to Gilead. So what does this mean for us? It's just one more example of how critical it is for Democrats to take the Supreme Court and the courts seriously. Republicans, unfortunately, have beaten us there and beaten us badly. I mean, it's unbelievable for me to think 
that even when you have Chief Justice John Roberts, who is a political attorney working in the Reagan administration, even when you have him joining the liberals on the court, you still have a five to four majority of conservatives. And that majority seems intent on overturning everything in society. We cannot be complacent about what the Supreme Court is going to take away from us and what we need to do to stop it. And we need to take straight to the voters the importance of what their vote means to the things that they take for granted, really. I think American women really have started to take abortion for granted, and maybe they're starting to wake up to the fact that that's at risk. But the idea that birth control is at risk, well, that's something that nobody would even think about. But it is. And the attack on abortion is just the start. We need to spread this message far and wide and make sure people are aware of it so that they get out and vote in the next election. Because frankly, the biggest risk that Democrats face in the next election is complacency and lack of enthusiasm among our own voters. Because believe me, the Republicans are ready to get out and vote. And when they do that, we don't want to see the consequences. Well, if you want to see more about the steps that Texas has taken to outlaw abortion, check out this video over here. I made this video a number of months ago, but the truth be told is I've been warning about the attack on abortion rights since I was in college. It's time that we as Democrats take this seriously and stop basically hoping that this problem will go away. I'll see you in that video. In the meantime, let's hope for continued progress. Thank you.